Hey everyone, welcome back. So I hope you guys are having a great Friday. We got some news out today from Hive blockchain, which we're going to get into. Um, so they have sold some BTC, but they didn't provide how much they sold or how much they're currently hodling. So did they sell all of it or did they sell a portion of it? They also provided us with their Intel ASIC miners that they got some in, but they're providing lower uh, number, of, number that are ordered and a lower number for the hash rate as well. So that's kind of confusing and, that, and there's no explanation to it. So we'll get into all that as always. But first, as you guys know, this is not financial advice for entertainment only. Do your own research. I'm investing in coins and companies for full disclosure and I do own Hive shares as well. So you guys are aware. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the markets. But if you enjoy this type of video, hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out tremendously. Let's take a look at Hive right now on the market, see how they're doing. They're actually up today a little bit, 1.31% to $1.94, which is good. Uh, Surprising of the news that came out, uh, I would have thought that the stock price would have been falling a little bit here, but it is not. Um, so that's actually surprising there. And let's take a look at, uh, well, let's see where they came from, where we were just a while ago. We're on the daily chart. So this was back in August. They peaked at around $7.23. Since then, they have fallen. Let's go to the peak here, $7.49, to a low now of right around there. So they've fallen 74.36%, about $5.57 in about 116 days, uh, trading days. So they've been beaten down just like all the rest of the miners have. But let's get into the news here and see we, what we can gather from it all. But I was not happy with it. I also tweeted out to Hive and Frank, the CEO of the company. Haven't heard anything back yet, but we'll take a look at it and We'll get you guys covered as far as what's going on here. So high blockchain provides November production 2022 update. Here is the important parts of it. So high produced 264 bitcoins in the month of November from ASIC and GPU mining operations with monthly average hash rate of 2.51 exahash. That is a combination of GPU and ASIC mining representing an average of 105 BTC per exahash, which is about right. And then Hive has received 262 units of the new Hive Buzz Miner. Those are those are their ASIC miners from Intel, powered by the Intel Block uh, Block Scale ASIC. An additional 420 units are expected to be received in the next week. Total production allocation of the Hive Buzz Miner for 2022 is 5,800 units, which are all expected to be delivered through December 2022 and January 2023. Uh, we'll take a look at the numbers that we had for this. This is actually lower. There is some good news also here. So Hive purchased a total of 2,130 new Bitmain S19G Pro miners, which are expected to arrive in December. So we're in December now or early January 2023, of which 1,930 are brand new in boxes. So it looks like we have, what, 200 that might be used potentially, which is fine, depending on how long they've been uh, running. Hive owns all of its ASIC and GPU equipment without overburdensome debt servicing payments associated with any of our crypto mining hardware. So that's good there too. So there's a little bit of good news here, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions here. Uh, we know that they've mined 264 BTC. They are averaging about 8.8 .8 BTC per day. And then here's the details on their own ASIC mining hash rate. It's 2.31 as of November 30th. And then a total uh, combined, so they have another 200 petahash roughly of uh, GPU mining that's resulting in 2.51 exahash total for them. So here's a quote from Darcy, the CFO of Hive. So in November, we continue to face several external macro forces which increase market turbulence due to the contagion concerns caused by the FTX implosion, rising interest rates and pro pronouncements by various governments on energy concerns. In response, we took a conservative strategy with our balance sheet and strengthened our liquidity position by selling some Bitcoin. They didn't provide how much they sold. Did they sell one Bitcoin? Did they sell all of their Bitcoin? This is the part that we want to know. This is what they have included in the past every single month of what their hot position is, how much they sold. They did not include it in this one. So without a void of, in, with a void of information, you know, people's minds go towards the worst case scenario. They sold all of them. We don't know. Uh, and then as far as the government's on energy concerns, so there has been some uh, talk in Canada, I think Quebec more specifically, about possibly having the contracts be null and void. Uh, potentially, uh, we're waiting on more confirmation on that and more clarity from it as well. Okay, next, we do not control these volatile external risks, but we can control how we adapt. We also begin improving the efficiency of our mining fleet with new and more efficient equipment purchases, which will provide more room for profitability. 
countering the facts of rising energy costs, rising global Bitcoin mining difficulties since September, and Bitcoin prices that have remained low. So I'm guessing they're going to be swapping out some, some of their older miners, and we'll take a look at possibly what those could be, which would be a good thing as well. Then Frank Holmes here, the C executive chairman of Hive, stated the following. The team has done an excellent job squeezing efficiencies everywhere they can and are now being opportunistic by quickly upgrading our Bitcoin AC miners with more efficient machines as the cost to buy AC miners like the S19G Pro have fallen almost 85% from prices seen last uh, year this time around as well, which is true. So it does look like they're going to be upgrading when, I guess when he says upgrading is going to be replacing those because you can't really upgrade the miners, you can replace them out, okay? So that's going to be actually pretty good news there as well. And then... Aiden, president and CEO of Hive, stated the following, We must seek opportunities which can include optimize, optimizing grid balancing to earn profits from energy contracts or acquiring distressed assets at steeply discounted rates. So there he's talking about potentially, which I think they've done in November here. We'll take a look at the numbers. But what he's talking about is shutting down the miners when electricity, electricity rates get too high. And then that way you get a discount from the energy provider or credits or whatever they have the deal worked out as. Okay. Capitalizing on these types of opportunities are only possible with a sound treasury management strategy, allowing for a strong balance sheet during periods of reduced profitability and market turmoil. Okay. That's fine there. Continuing on here, our fleet of GPUs use a unique algorithm to mine altcoins, which are exchanged for Bitcoin. That's so that's fine there. Consequently, we earn and take custody of Bitcoin only. This month, our GPU fleet produced 39.3 BTC. This is in addition to the 224 BTC produced from our Bitcoin ASIC mining operations for a total of 264 Bitcoin. So that's good. So at least we know what their ASICs are producing and what their GPUs are producing. That's fine. We can work with those numbers. We can figure out how much they made on their ASICs along with what they potentially made from their GPU fleet. Okay. Hive expansion plans here. So... The 5,800 Hive buzz miners powered by the Intel Black Scale ASICs are expected to produce upwards of 630 petahash. So that's that's one that's a little concerning here. So that comes out to be like 98 terahash per miner, I think, if my math is right on this. No, 109, sorry, 109 terahash on that, where we were expecting to be closer to 133 terahash when they originally reported. And we'll look at the numbers that I have, and I'll kind of go through it all. The company expects to install all these high buzz miners within existing operating infrastructure, so that's good. They don't need other, uh, they, they don't need to build out to include those. But I'm guessing they're going to be possibly taking out older miners and replacing them with the newer ones, which is good. Next, uh, these miners will be integrated into our global operating fleet to upgrade existing legacy AC miners, thus lowering the company's overall cost of Bitcoin production and improving profitability. These Intel blocks, uh, block scale ASICs, have been fully paid for. And as such, the additional hash rate from the Hive Intel Buzz Miners is fully funded without the company having to incur debt for hash rate growth by uh, collateralizing any A6 or BTC. So that's great there. Additionally, the 1,930 Bitmain S19G Pro Ant Miners are expected to produce upwards of 185 petahash per second. I hate it when they say upwards of. Could that be 200? Could that be 210? Could that be 187? I wish it would provide more concrete numbers that we can go by because that can drastically change the profitability of miners, unfortunately. So based on this number here, we'll take a look at it also. It would mean that the miners are like 97 terahash, I'm thinking from memory here, but we'll take a look at the numbers that I have for them. Um, so that's another one of those things where it would be nice to know exactly what they're getting. Okay, global energy markets. The company notes that energy markets globally are experiencing high levels of volatility, which is reflected in index pricing while Hive's energy pro uh, portfolio has been both fixed price contracts as well as spot index pricing. Hive strives to mitigate risk where possible by hedging energy contracts. As hedging contracts exist for fixed lengths of time, they must be renewed from time to time and thus the ratio of fixed versus index energy costs vary. Okay, So that's kind of good to know that they have both of them fixed and uh, fixed, what do they call it, fixed and uh, basically index pricing. Rather than operate at full capacity for the sake of maximizing production, Hive instead strives to operate at the optimal capacity, which allows for best profitability, which sometimes may favor selling energy back into the grid when that is more profitable than mining. And it looks like they did that in November. Okay, they go about network difficulty here, they increase RSU grants, and that's it. Okay, so from this release came out another story from Coindesk 
So crypto miner hive cuts computing power forecast for Intel chips based rigs. And as of when this was published, they have not heard back from Hive here yet, and we'll get into it here. So they're also concerned about this. They're also talking about the same thing I am. So the 5,800 new machines dubbed Hive Buzz Miners will have total computing power of more than 630 petahash per second. Uh, the Vancouver firm said Friday in October it estimated total one exahash, right? So they had more miners and better hash rate. So that's one of the things we want to get to the bottom of. Hive did not give a reason for the discrepancy and had not responded to Coindesk's request for comment by the time of publication. I've also reached out to him via Twitter here. You can see here, um, I sent this out to Hive Blockchain along with uh, Frank Holmes. Can you release how many BTC were sold in November and what your hodl position was at the end of the month? Thank you. Um, this was in regard to their how much they sold. We just don't know. And then the other tweet that I did uh, towards them was also, Hive team, uh, we as investors need answers for these questions raised. So we have 133 terahash versus 109 terahash miners. Then we also had one exahash versus 630 petahash hash rate increase. And then 7,550 miners versus 5,800 numbers. So in absence of information, darkness takes hold, right? Hopefully we'll get some answers from it. I also included Anthony Powers in on these as he has pretty good context with the team over at Hive. I was hoping he might have some answers, but he does not yet. He's also been trying to get a hold of them as well. So if we get any clarification on any of this stuff, we'll do an update video on it as well. Okay, going back here. So let's see here. So it's possible it changed the specifications of the miners to lower power consumption during a period of high electricity costs, which would be fine, but it would have been nice for them to explain it. Here's the reason we did it. We wanted to decrease the electrical draw, whatever the reason was. It's also possible it ordered fewer machines than anticipated as the price of Bitcoin fell more than 60% this year. And if that was the case, they should have just came out and say it. You know, we ordered less. If things improve, we'll order the rest of them that we're supposed to get to. And, you know, everything would have been fine. But when they don't provide any information, kind of it's like, what the heck's going on? So some of the machines have already been installed with the rest expected by the end of January. The rig's computing power of about 109 terahertz per second. Per machine is a little over that of Bitmain and Miner's S19 Pros released in 2020. And then Hive didn't divulge the energy efficiency or cost of the rigs, key metrics for miners struggling to keep up with the high power costs. Uh, the Intel chip is touted as environmentally friendly, indicating that efficiency will be its strong suit, but we just don't know that. We haven't gotten any information from them yet. And they were supposed to provide that to us uh, when they actually got the miners in, right? We haven't seen any data on it. So there's those things. And let's take a look at a little blurb here. I'm not gonna play the video. But this was from Hive today. They posted this. So this is, I'm guessing, what the miners look like that are the buzz miners powered by the Intel block scale A6. So there's a picture of those. There's Aiden also, uh, the president and COO, with that one of those miners. So they look pretty standard, almost like the uh, ant miners that we are used to, have grown to love and hate at the same time. Uh, those are it. So not much change from the design perspective of it. Uh, you got two fans in the front, two front, two fans in the back, and you got the ASIC boards inside there and, you know, they're churning out Bitcoins. Okay, so that is all of the information that we have on it. I think we covered pretty much everything. So let's take a look, take a look at my numbers and then we'll get into everything here. So shares outstanding right now is about 82.6 million shares, market cap 157 million, almost 158. Their current hash rate, and this is just their A6, is 2.38 exahash. Their future hash rate currently with the ASIC Intel, the buzz, uh, what, is, what do they call those, buzz miners, whatever the heck they're called, uh, they're supposed to get to about 4.6. Now, if that number has changed, that's going to also uh, reflect here by maybe 400 petahash less, right around there, so that would get them to maybe 4.3. But we don't know what we don't know. Okay, so otherwise they're pretty much 50% operational right now. Future hash rate growth is about 96. Uh, hash rate average per miner is right now 86 terahashes, which isn't the best, uh, but it's not. I don't think it's the worst either. And their BTC hodl, last we know is from October production updates was 3,311. We don't know if that's still the case, how much they sold or how much they're still hodling. And here is their BTC production per month. So we started out the year at 425, went down to 377, up to 447, 458, 459. Then we went down to 420, 465. We reached a high of 518 in August. 
And then we've been falling here ever since September when Ethereum mining was no longer feasible. And we see that their hash rate or BTC mine per month has been decreasing ever since then. Okay, so that's not really good. And then here is their BTC per exahash. They've been pretty steady here through the first part of the year, kind of nicely increased towards uh, September into August. And then after that, they've gone down to 110 in October and 105 BTC per exahash at, in November. So still pretty good, still towards the higher end of all the miners that so far have reported. I think they're at the number one spot, followed by, I believe, I'll have to look back, but I think it's uh, Bitfarms is uh, right on their heels. Bitfarms or DMG is right there. Okay, here's what we have for them, 264 BTC for the month. That gave us about 4.64 million in revenue. That is a decrease of 14% from last month. We had a decrease also in October of 22%. September was a decrease of 23% uh, from the prior month. So we're seeing a continued downtrend, which isn't good. They really need to start getting miners installed in, in order to combat the growth and the network hash rate and difficulty. Okay, now as far as how much they sold, we just don't know. I put it as having zero right now. They sold potentially 3,575 Bitcoins at around 63 million, if that's the case. We but we just don't know. Okay, so when we do get some clarification on this, we will update this and I'll, we'll update you guys as well on it. Okay, uh, let me see here. So BTC A6 is uh, 2.38 exahash and then about 130 petahash of uh, GPU mining as well. So in November, we have them set with all the miners here, nothing being installed pretty much. I still have them at 2.38, uh, 2 which I think they reported 2.31 or something like that. So we're pretty close to that. But with all that, they are only mining for 25.6 days in November. So they did shut down during some time when it was opportunistic for them to do so. Okay, and then from GPU mining, they earned approximately 689,000, I'm guessing here on that, based on these numbers to add up to the total 4.64 million in revenue, which is gonna be obviously down for them. Okay, now looking at the miners here that we have, the Intel ASIC miners, they reported they're gonna be purchasing 7,550 of those. We were expecting them to be at uh, 133 terahash per miner. They're saying now that they're getting 5,800 of those miners and they're going to be about 630 petahash. They're saying upwards above 630. Well, we don't know what that's going to be. So they're coming out at 109 terahash per miners, which is a big difference here on uh, the speed of the miners, obviously. So we really need clarification on this, what's going on here. And then we also really need clarification on these ant miners, S19s. They reported they're getting 2,130, but they reported that the 1,130 are producing 185 uh, petahash, which gets us to 96 terahash per miner right now. Now, I'm not including these in my totals yet because I just don't have the clarity on it. So we only have the Intel icing miners here that were originally reported for one exahash of uh, being added on, but that possibly will change. We'll get that down to 632 potentially, okay? So something to be mindful of here. So we do have some information that's lacking. We need clarification. One good thing is institutions. So institutions did drop down a little bit here from the prior month to 99, but number of shares went up quite nicely to 11.8 million from 7.8. So that's a good thing. Institutions are buying in. Uh, and then percentage owned also went up to 14.28. That is the highest that we've had them here for the last 12 months, which is also good. We still have the same uh, strong buy rating of one, uh, buy rating of two. And then price targets of $7 and average is $5.66 and a low of $2.97. So those got adjusted here recently uh, compared to last month's, which was just $7 across the board. Okay. Now, looking at their balance sheet here at the end of, it's their Q2 2023, I think. This was reported. When was this reported? I believe this was reported just recently that they came out, if I'm not mistaken. This total current assets, they had plenty of assets on hand, 88 million 64 million of that was the digital currency and liabilities was only 23 million so they should have been fine there uh if they sold btc that's fine we just want to know how much btc they sold to see where they are right now okay now looking at all the numbers here we have them potentially for the last three quarters are already reported the current quarter we're in is fluid 
We don't know where December is going to come in. We won't find out until January, and that will get updated here. We also don't know where Bitcoin price is going to go. We don't know where the network hash rate is going to go, which is also going to affect the profitability as well. Right now, we have them for December at possibly 5.4 million, which would get us to about 16 million for the quarter, which is a pretty big drop here from their a quarter ending in September, which was almost 30 million. So almost half uh, reduction in profitability or revenue on it. Okay. So when we look at all the numbers here, we combine this current quarter that we're in that's still in, in flux. And then the last three quarters, we're looking at a combined total of 139 million potentially. And if we take the 50% net income from gross revenue, we're looking at about 69 million or with a PE of, well, they're trading right now at a PE of between two and three, but I could easily see them getting to a PE of 10, which will get us to about $7.60, which is on the higher end of the analyst estimates. And oop, 10, 8.45, so we're above that. And if we're looking at 75% net income from gross revenue, we're looking at 12.67. So they are way undervalued right now. But other than that, uh, we really need clarity. So that's why I was a little peeved this morning and tweeted out at them a little bit because they have provided the information in the past. Every single month they've provided this information and it's been great. Now when you don't provide the information, it kind of makes investors think, what the heck is going on? So hopefully within the next 24 to 48 hours, if not by Monday, they provide some clarity to it. Otherwise, there's still going to be a lot of guessing going on as to what's going on. Um, and that's not good for investors, okay? Let me know what you guys think of all of this, what you, what you think is going on. Uh, is it just a hiccup? Is it just a, um, a mistake on their part, a, fu a fupar? Uh, or was this done intentionally not to provide the information because they sold more than they think investors would stomach? So that's where we are at, okay? We also have Argo that provided their numbers today as well. We'll get into that possibly in tomorrow's video. I'm um, going to be busy here the rest of the afternoon, so no more videos from me for tonight. So we'll look at the miners, see how they did today, tomorrow, and we'll get into Argo's information as well, okay? So thank you so much for watching. Spreadsheet is always available to my Patreon members, as always. Also, if you guys are looking to get your coins off the exchanges, um, you want to get a hardware wallet, there's Ledger. I recommend Ledger. I've been using it for five years. There is a link in my description. It's an affiliate link. So if you guys do use it, I'll get a you know a small percentage on that purchase price. Um, helps me out a little bit. Okay, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye.